Hi there, and welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and as you might have noticed, we've got a bit of a change of scenery. My back garden. So, in case you don't know, in the UK, we're experiencing a little bit of a heat wave at the moment. And what that means to us is that it gets a little bit warm very quickly, with no warning whatsoever, and um, we can't cope with it. Now, it happens for maybe once a year, twice a year for a couple of days. So it really isn't worth us kind of installing any air conditioning or anything like that. So we basically just sit in sweaty messes and puddles for a couple of days until we can finally get some sleep. So I'm out here because it's nice and breezy. Fortunately, we might get a bit of mic feedback, maybe a bit of noise from around. I live in a city, so who knows? Play it by ear, let's go for it. And uh, today we're going to be checking out the fifth fifth episode in the American series that I'm running and that is going to be this little boy here which is the Jim Beam classic white label bourbon. Now this is about as bourbon as you can get you know this is this everybody knows Jim Beam most people would have tried this and imagine if you're watching this you'd have tried this and you're probably just looking at my thoughts but if you haven't tried this then this is this is the start you know this is this is the basic stuff it's the cheapest stuff barring the kind of really basic just says bourbon on the label nothing else but um, let's get into it and uh, see what it's like I know some people move on from it pretty quickly and um, maybe it's time to have a look at see if it's anything, anything worthwhile so as we know bourbons always natural color no different to this guy here all you'll probably find this is a Kentucky straight bourbon and I don't think it says on here how many years so maybe it's even more than four I'm not entirely sure I'm sure somebody will let me know but anyway a bit of wind bottled at 40 percent let's give it a go now this is because it's a bourbon it's at least 51 percent corn probably higher I'd say in my limited knowledge of bourbons that it's probably quite a high corn there's definitely a bit of that sweetness of the corn coming through. But it's like, it's like some of the other bourbons I've had, if you've tried any of those so far, it's like that, but a little bit more watered down. It's no, no, no means a bad thing, you know, sometimes a little bit of strength is, is what you want, sometimes it isn't, sometimes you want something a bit easy drinking, and this is that. Let's have a sip. Yeah, it's more of what we get on the nose. Watery, but um, not, not terribly negatively. Touch of citrus, maybe. Kind of limey, limey, I think. Some say they get a lot of vanilla, but not for me. Kids. Something I do get on this is a touch of marzipan. Not immediately, more like the back of the tongue, just after you swallow. Hmm. Let's have another go. Surprisingly, the flavour lasts quite a long time. Off it goes, still a bit of tingle, still a bit of flavour. And not even a bad flavour, it's like, it's more like pop than, than bourbon, I think. It's probably a bit unfair to say, but that's what I get from it. But um, it's it's perfectly fine, you know. I picked this up at um, my local supermarket, considering that's come from Kentucky. It's made its way over to the UK, and it's in my supermarket, usually for about 15 to 18 pounds, but I picked this up for 12 pounds 50, which is bloody steel, to be honest with you. But um, at that price, if you've never tried any bourbons before, uh, maybe try it. It's not the best example of bourbon to give, to be sure, but it's not terrible either, you know, and it's one that's worth coming back to. Hmm. There you go. Not much more to say about it. Like I say, it's not overly complex. Very cheap. It is what it is. It knows what it is. You guys know what it is. I'm sure a few of you will recommend that it's good for mixes and things like that. You know me, I'm not into that. People can mix with their kind of Jack Daniels and stuff over this, in this country. That's your, your go-to American whiskey for, for mixing. I would let someone mix this when they came round, but um, for me, it's just a kind of go-to, go-to dram for regular everyday drinking. Get rid of the bottle, no problem, get another one. There you go. Well, thanks for joining me in my garden for another episode of No Nonsense Whiskey. Next week, 
next week on Monday, we'll be checking out something a little bit special. Hopefully uh, a lot of you guys will be very interested to see about it. It's uh, certainly something exciting for me. So do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like and comment. Let me know what you think. See you next time.